Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 says, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Without faith it is impossible to please God. Impossible. That means if you don't have faith, you know, there's no way you can possibly please God. You say, Sean, well, I believe in God and I have faith. Well, that's great. That's great. But do you have faith in the right God? Because there's many gods. You know, there's a lot of gods that even call themselves God, but they're just a false God. See, there's only one true God. James chapter 2, verse 19 says, Thou believest that there is one God, and thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. See, the devil also believes in one God, too. But let me tell you this. It doesn't do you any good to believe in God if your God is a false God. You see, Jesus Christ doesn't teach that every God, every religion is equal. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. All roads do not lead to heaven. All gods, all religions will not get you into heaven. Did you know that? You know, a lot of people think that, oh, Jesus loves everybody, you know. He died for everybody. Every, you know, as long as you're a good person, you're fine. But that's not what Jesus taught. You say, Sean, well, listen, I'm not religious. I don't believe in religion because, you know, religion, that, that's, that was all just designed to control you. But I'm spiritual. You know, I believe in God. I believe in a higher power. Oh, you think, you think you're spiritual. Okay, well, which spirit? Which spirit do you believe in? Is it the Holy Spirit or is it the Devil's Spirit? My point is, you believe in spirits, right? That's good, right? Because not everything that we can see and taste and touch, um, that's not everything there is to life. There's things that we can't see that also exist. Just a quick example, um, you know, love, just the concept of love. You can't taste it, you can't touch it, you can't scientifically prove it. But do you believe in it? Of course you do. Because it's real, it exists. Greetings, friends and colleagues. It's Sean Elvis. Sorry for this wind. In today's video, um, I'm going to be straight up preaching out of the Bible, showing you uh, if you don't know what the Bible says that you have to do in order to get to heaven when you die. I'm gonna, that's what I'm going to show you today. So I'm gonna, I have my King James Bible right here. Nothing scripted today. I did not script any of this, but I'm just going to show you some verses that will teach you what you need to do, what Jesus taught, what the Bible taught, that we must do in order to go to heaven when we die. So when we breathe our last breath, we can ensure that our, that our next breath will be taken in heaven in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. So... Um, the, thir the first thing you need to understand is uh, the Bible says in 1 John chapter 5, verse 13, that these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that you have eternal life. So the Bible tells us we could know right now, while we're breathing, while you're watching this video, you could know 100% for sure if you're going to die, if you're going to go to heaven. It's not... Um, you know, because I used to, when I was growing up, I used to think, oh man, you know, if I, I need to obey the commandments, I need to go to church, I need to read my Bible. But then, as I started reading the Bible and I started learning what Jesus really taught, he didn't teach anything like that at all. It's all about believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what the Bible says. And I apologize for this wind. <laughs> it wasn't windy when I started this video. No, here we go. Anyways. Uh, let's jump right in. And for the sake of this video, you know, I'm not going to uh, um, preach on why I use the King James Bible, but I just want to briefly say this. Every other Bible out there has been copyrighted, right? The King James Version of the Bible is the only version in English that has not been copyrighted. Every other uh, version has been copyrighted and published for profit. And in order to copyright and not um, uh, by law, 
you can you have to change at least 20 percent of what the words say in the, in the original to avoid any copyright infringement so any other bible out there has got to be at least 20 percent different than the king james bible so the king james bible is um is basically it takes the old Hebrew and Greek manuscripts, the original manuscripts, and it translated them into English. So that's what the King James Bible is. Every other Bible is copyrighted, changed 20%, but we're not going to get into that in this video. In this video, I'm just going to preach to you the gospel. So here we go. So if you have a Bible, open it up. If not, I'll try to um, put the verses on the screen for you. Um, Otherwise, just listen up and follow along. The first thing you need to understand is we're all sinners. The Bible says in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. For all have sinned. That means every, everybody you, you come in contact to, whether they're dead, whether they're alive, everybody is going to commit some sin at some point in their life. Everybody's guilty. Everybody is a sinner. You know, it's usually not hard uh, you don't have to think too much um, of anything wrong that you've ever done in your life. You know, it's, it's pretty quick to come up with, oh yeah, I messed up that, right? I messed up in this area. I messed up this day. Um, we can all point to something that we that we uh, either did wrong or something that um, we're ashamed of, you know, perhaps. Um, but some sin. We're all sinners. And, and what is a sin? You know, a sin, according to the Bible, is in 1 John chapter 3, verse 4, Bible says, whosoever committed sin transgresses all transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. See, God gave us the law. He gave us the Ten Commandments, and there's a lot more commandments that He gave us. But basically, when we break a commandment, right? The Bible says, thou shalt not steal, and we steal something. Well, that's a sin. And, and, and uh, the book of James says, um, all it takes is one sin. You know, to be guilty of breaking the whole law, right? So, but we'll, we'll get to that later. Right now, what you need to understand is sin is either, it's transgressing the law. It's either doing something that you're not, that God told us not to do, or it's not doing something that God told us to do, okay? Now, once you understand that you're a sinner, you need to understand what the punishment for sin is. The punishment for sin uh, is found in Romans chapter 6, verses 23. The Bible says, For the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. What is a wage? A wage is, you know, like when you go to work, and you, let's say you work an eight-hour shift. Well, they pay you a wage. You, you earn an hourly wage most of the time, right? Well, the Bible says, When we sin, we earn death. For the wages of sin is death. So every time that you think a bad thought or, or you commit a sin, you are earning death. But, the Bible says it is, a, it is appointed man once to die, but after this the judgment. So it's not over after you die, yes, because we're all sinners and all, our, our flesh is all going to die and perish and turn to dust again. But we have a soul which God created in our bodies which lives eternally, okay? And this eternal soul, when it, and this eternal soul, after your flesh dies, it doesn't just evaporate and cease to exist. No, no, no. After this, the judgment. Then God's going to judge you for all your sins, and He's going to find you guilty. It says in Revelations chapter twenty, verse fourteen, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. So the Bible talks about a second death in Revelation 20, uh, 14. So not only is your flesh going to die, but your soul is going to be punished for your sins in hell. And you know, I have to give you the bad news first before I get, get you the good news. So the good news is coming. But before I get to the good news, you have to understand the bad news is we're all sinners. And the punishment of that sin is death and hell. And hell, what is hell? You know, hell is not just you cease to exist. Hell is an everlasting punishment. Let me prove it to you. Then, um, this is the words of Jesus in Matthew chapter 25, verse 46. He says, And these shall go away into everlasting punishment. 
everlasting punishment. That's what hell is. Hell means you're going to be punished and it's going to last forever. You say, Sean, well, that's not fair. But that's what the Bible says. It doesn't care. It doesn't this, this punishment doesn't care whether you believe in it or not. It's the truth. Everlasting punishment. That's the worst part about hell. That's the worst part is that there's no way out. You know, like there's a lot of things in this life that, you know, you can get that will eventually end. But hell as a punishment never ends. And that's the worst part, I think. You know, you're you're burning, you're on fire, you're being punished, and it just never stops. It just keeps coming and coming. You say, well, that sounds like a mean God who would punish people. But listen, he punishes bad people. He punishes sinners. Remember, we earned it. That's what we deserve. We're sinners. You know? Like when, when people go to prison, when they go to jail, we, you don't punish righteous people. You punish people who break the law. Well, God's this. God's kind of similar to that in, in the sense that he says, Hey, I have a holy law. I have a holy kingdom. And, he, and I don't want anything tarnishing my perfect holy kingdom. Okay, you cannot be in the presence of God and be a sinner. God never lies. He's perfect. He's all loving. He's all kind. His streets in heaven are paved with gold. He doesn't want us sinners in there destroying the place. So he has to punish us in order to keep his kingdom perfect. But let me get to you the good news. right? So the bad news is you have to understand you're a sinner and admit it. And understand that the punishment for your sin is you deserve to go to hell. But see, here's the thing. God doesn't want us to go to hell. God is a gracious God. He's a loving God. He created us for a reason. He created our eternal soul for a reason. And it's not to go to hell. He created hell for the devils and, and the fallen angels who, who reject Him. He didn't create it for us. He wants us to be in heaven. The Bible says God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That means God, He wants everybody to come to repentance he loves us and i'll prove it to you the bible says in romans chapter 5 verse 8 it says but god commended his love towards us and now in that while we were yet sinners christ died for us so jesus christ he came down here he sacrificed his life because he loved us so much you know think about it he came from a perfect holy place he was sit, he was sitting at the right hand of god in heaven and he came down to die for us. You know, I, I mean, just a quick example, just for comparison's sake, you know, would you go and trade and, and go um, on death row with somebody on death row and say, hey, buddy, I'm going to, I love you so much. I'm going to, I'm going to come hang out with you on death row and we're both going to die together. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. Or even, even any jail, right? You wouldn't go to any jail and, 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 Say, I love you so much, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to jail with you. <laughs> no, you wouldn't do that, right? But God, He loves us so much, He came from His holy kingdom in heaven, His perfect kingdom down here, and says, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm not only going to spend time with you guys, I'm going to die for you guys. But we're going to get to that. And I want you to understand who Jesus is, who Jesus Christ is, because Christ is not Jesus' last name, okay? We don't know what Jesus' last name is, but... Christ is a title. It means Messiah. Matthew chapter 16 verse 15 says, He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Christ is a title. It means He's our Messiah. He's the Son of God. He's not just, Hey bro. He's not, Hey man. He's Christ. Jesus Christ. He has a title. Like no other, but nobody else has a title. You know, you wouldn't call a doctor, hey, bro, what's up, bro? You know, hey, it's doctor, okay? And Jesus Christ is no different. He says, hey, it's, it's Christ. I'm Jesus, the Christ, the Son of the living God. And, 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 and I, I want to run through who Jesus really was, okay? Because not everybody knows who Jesus was. I know, I, you know, many people know the basic story. Uh, Jesus Christ came down here and he died for us on a cross and three days later he was resurrected. But let's get down to the details of who Christ really was. 
Matthew chapter 1 verse 23 says, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted as God's, God is with us. So Jesus Christ was born of a virgin. You know, me, I was born of a, of a, of a woman who, who uh, had relations with a man, right? But Jesus Christ, he was born of a, of a pure woman who had never been with a man. So God was his father. God impregnated, impregnated Mary um, through the Holy Ghost, right? That's who impregnated Mary. It wasn't some other man. It was God himself, the Holy Spirit. And I also want you to know that Jesus was a man. He was a flesh and blood, just like you're seeing the man right here on this screen. 1 Timothy 2, 5 says, For there is, there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. So Jesus Christ was a flesh and blood man, just like me. Also, he was God. Titus chapter 2, verse 13 says, Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God, and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ was man, and he's God. See, I'm just a man. I'm a sinner. But Jesus was a man at the same time as being God. Now, <laughs> I don't, I don't uh, pretend to know how to explain how that works, but that's what the Bible says, so I believe it. Third thing I want you to know about Jesus is Jesus lived a sinless life. He never once told a lie. Never once stole anything, never once thought a bad thought, never once even thought about hurting somebody or doing wrong. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 22, Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Jesus Christ did no sin. He was not a sinner. He was sinless, without sin. He was pure, holy, honest his whole life, and he didn't live too long, but... The time he did have here on this planet, he never once sinned. He always loved everybody, and he always did the right thing. Jesus didn't go... The fourth thing I want you to know is... Or the fifth thing, rather. Sorry. Not keeping track here. The fifth thing is Jesus died for us willingly. You know, when Jesus went to the cross, he did it of his own free will choice. The Bible says he could have called down legions of angels at any time to stop everything, but he didn't. He willingly chose to die for us. The Bible says in John 15, 13, greater love hath no man than this, than a man lay down his life for his friends. Jesus laid his life down for us. You see? Man may have killed him, but Jesus Christ willingly laid his life down. Jesus died for the sins of the whole world. So the Bible says, you know, when, when Jesus was hanging on the cross, it was like he was taking all your punishment. Remember, I said that we're all sinners and we all deserve a punishment in hell. Well, Jesus Christ, when he was hanging on the cross, he said, hey, it's, it's, I'm taking all your punishments on me. It's as if I'm doing them. That's why I'm being punished. The Bible says in 1 John 2, 2, he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. So that means when Jesus was hanging on the cross, he didn't just die for your sins, my sins, but everybody before him and everybody after him, and the sins of anybody and everybody who's ever lived, he died for those sins. And he can do that because he never had any sin, right? See, I can't die for anybody's sin because I'm a sinner. I have to pay for my own punishment. But because he never sinned, he's allowed to take our punishments upon himself and take uh, that punishment for us, in place of us. Because here's the thing. If I were to take my punishment and go to hell, I would not be able to come back. But Jesus Christ, he, he took the punishment. He went to hell and he resurrected himself from the grave like nobody else can do. Nobody else has the power to do that. And that's what a, that's my other point is not a lot of people understand that Jesus Christ, his soul descended into hell for three days and three nights. Acts chapter two verse thirty one says, "He 
he, seeing this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. Acts, that was Acts 2.31. So Jesus' soul actually descended into hell for three days and three nights as punishment for our sins. And what happened three days later? He resurrected himself from the grave. He physically, bodily resurrected. The Bible says in Luke 24, 39, Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones as ye see me have. So they actually physically could touch Jesus, see the, see the um, holes in his hands and, and the gash in his side, and, 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 and they could touch him. And, and, and he physically was uh, resurrected from the grave. And then he ascended into heaven after that, where right now he currently is seated at the right hand of God the Father. It says, Mark 16, 19, So then, after, after the Lord spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. You know, And, and, that, and that's where he's going to stay until, uh, until his second coming, when he's going to come back. Um, but that's another sermon. So that's the life of Jesus. So the, the, here's the question. If Jesus Christ died for the sins of the whole world, does that mean everybody automatically goes to heaven? Excuse me. Does that mean everybody automatically goes to heaven? No, not everybody's going to heaven. Luke 13, 23 says, Then said one unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? And he said unto them, listen to this, this is Jesus, Strive to enter in at the straight gate for many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. So he's saying, hey, look, there's, there's a lot of people who are going to wish to go to heaven one day after they die. And they're not going to be able to do it because they didn't go in the right way. They, they tried to go in some other way, right? Like I spoke in the beginning, some other God through some other faith, through some other way. Well, what is that way that we have to go, Jesus, to get to heaven? What is the straight way, the straight gate that you're talking about? John 3, 3, Jesus says, and Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Jesus says you have to be born again. Well, how can we be born again, Jesus? I'm, I'm fully grown. How could I enter into my, uh, my mother's womb again and get born again? <laughs> Impossible, Jesus. But here's the thing. Jesus says if you're not born again, you won't even be able to see the kingdom of God. You know, if you can't see it, how, how can you possibly get there, right? You can't go anywhere that you can't see. How are you going to do that? So my question is, if we have to be born again, Jesus, how do we do that? Well, he answers us in John chapter 1, verse 12. But as many as received him, received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So in order to get born again, we have to receive Jesus Christ. We have to believe on His name. Now, why, why, why is believing on Jesus Christ's name so important? Acts 4.12 says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. John 14, 6 says, Jesus saith unto them, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man come to the Father but by me. There's no other name under heaven given by men by which we must be saved. There's power in the name of Jesus and only the name of Jesus. I don't care what other God you're, 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 uh, you're, you're, you're seeking salvation in, whether it's Buddha or Muhammad or uh, Joseph Smith. or It doesn't matter if it's not Jesus, the Jesus of the Bible. You're not going to make it. So here's the money question. What determines who goes to heaven, who goes to hell? The Bible says in John 3, 18, He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. In this verse right here, we, we have two people. We have two, two groups. On one group, we have people that believe on him, and they're not condemned. And then we have group two. They believe not, and they're condemned already. 
The, t the difference between who goes to heaven, who goes to hell, who's condemned and who's not condemned is who believes in Jesus and who doesn't. It's not about how good you are. This, this verse doesn't say, hey, whosoever goes to church or whosoever uh, uh, is a good person. It says whosoever believes in Jesus, whosoever doesn't. But what does that mean uh, to believe? And let me just hammer this point home. Acts chapter 16, verse 31, and write this down. This is important. And brought them out and says, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Good question, right? That's what this whole video I'm making is about. What do we have to do to get to heaven, Sean? I'm going to answer for you right now in Acts 16, 31. And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. Like I said, does this verse say, Hey, you have to read your Bible. <laughs> you have to stop sinning. You have to turn away from your drugs and your alcohol and your pornography. No. Now, don't get me wrong. Those are good things to do. But that's not how we get saved. That's not how we go to heaven when we die. That's not how we get our sins forgiven. That's not how we get justified and we uh, get right with the Lord. To get right with the Lord means, hey, there's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can do, sinner. You're a sinner. You deserve to go to hell. The only reason that you're able to make it to heaven is if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. That He died for your sins because you can't do it. So what is belief? If, every, if everything is all based on belief, what does it mean to believe? Galatians 2.16 says, Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith of Jesus Christ. By faith of Jesus Christ. That's what's important. Faith. Believing and faith go hand in hand together. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Now faith, excuse me, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Romans 3.24 says, Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. We can't earn our salvation, friends. It's all by faith. There's nothing you can do. You can, you can pray all day long, and that's great. You should. you should. You can go to church every day of the week. That's good. You should. You could read your Bible. You can live a good life, get all the drugs out of your life. But you can never earn it because it's all by faith. And let me prove that to you. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. It's a gift. Salvation's a gift. By grace are ye saved through faith. What is grace? Grace means you're getting something that you don't deserve. And 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 hold on. Let me just pause this video for a second. So we're back. The Bible says, For by grace are you saved through faith. Not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Nobody's going to be boasting when they get to heaven and say, Hey, I'm in heaven because I was better than you. I went to church more than you. I lived a better life than you did. Nobody's going to do that because it's all by grace. And See, none of us deserve it. None of us deserve to go to heaven. The only way we're going to get there is by grace, through faith. Through faith in what? Not in ourselves. You can't do it. There's nothing you can do to get there. It's the gift of God. It's a gift. Salvation is a free gift. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death. Remember that? When you sin, you earn death. But the gift of God is, et is eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. God has a gift for you. What is that gift, Sean? It's eternal life. That means it lasts forever. If I were to give you a gift and say, Hey, look, here's my car keys. I'm going to give you these as a gift. But I'm not going to give you that gift unless uh, you wash my car first. Or you do my laundry. Or you mow my lawn. That's not a gift, right? See, a gift is, let me ask you this, who pays for the gift, the giver or the receiver of the gift, right? When you, when, you, when you think of a Christmas gift, the person giving the gift pays for the gift, right? Well, that's, that's who's giving us a gift, God. He paid for it. He paid for 
uh, the gift of eternal life for us when he died on the cross. And he said, look, I have a gift for you. All we have to do is receive it. Remember the Bible says, whosoever received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. You have to receive this free gift. And you have to realize, hey, there's nothing I can do to go to heaven. I have to receive this precious gift of God, this, this holy Jesus Christ who died for my sins. And here's the thing, you know, some people think, well, I don't, I'm not deserving of this gift. I'm a really bad person. I've cursed God. I've done all these bad things. But here, John 6, verse 37 says, All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. See, if you read the Bible, not ever one time did Jesus turn anybody away who came to him and said, Hey, will you heal me, Jesus? Please heal me. He healed every single person. See, Jesus, the Bible says, remember, He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God wants us to repent and believe in Him. And see, the word repent, which you need to understand, it just means to change your mind. It doesn't mean uh, you have to um, change your ways and, and, and turn away from your sin, right? Because none of us can turn away from our sin. We're all sinners. That's the problem. What we need to do is change our mind and stop believing that we can uh, be be a better person to get to heaven. Now, don't get me wrong. You should try to be a better person as best as you can. But no matter how good you're going to try to be, you're going to come short of the glory of God. So that's why we have to put our faith in Jesus. We have to say, hey, look, there's nothing I can do. I need you to save me, Jesus. I need you to sacrifice yourself for me. I want to receive that gift that you gave me, that you died for my sins. And at what point, let me ask you this, at what point, if, let's say, okay, Sean, I believe Jesus died on the cross. I believe he died for my sins. I have faith. I believe that. So at what point are you saved? At what point can you say, okay, I'm saved. I'm not going to go to hell for my sins. I'm going to go to heaven. Uh, Bible answers this in John chapter 5, verse 24. And these are Jesus' words. He says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my words and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not co come into condemnation, but shall be passed from death to life. Hath everlasting life. He that heareth my words. So I'm preaching the word to you right now. You're hearing it. Okay? And if you're hearing it and you're believing it in your heart, the Bible says that you have everlasting life. That means right now, presently, the second you hear it, the second you believe it in your heart, boom, that's the second you're saved. That's the second you have been passed from death to life. That's the, that's the second the Holy Spirit enters you and you become a new creature. You become a son of God, an adopted son of God. You say, okay, great. Great, Sean, I hear you, I believe you. Well, what next? What happens after I believe? 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. You've been born again. You're a new creature now. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So now you, you, have, you can now see clearly, see the world how it really is. You know, it's like if I were to take these glasses, it's really sunny, I don't want to do this, but... If I were to take my glasses off, it's like, wow, I can see everything totally clear now. There's, no, there's nothing blocking my vision. I can see everything clear. You say, well, what happens if I stop believing, Sean? What if, what if I believe today, but tomorrow I have doubts, and, or maybe, I, maybe 10 years down the road I do something really wicked and I, and I turn against God? Well, that's a theoretical question, but assuming you did that, which I don't think is going to happen. But if it did, you would still be saved. Because remember, God's gift was eternal. It lasts forever. And, and here's the thing. If I, if I gave you a gift, a Christmas gift, right? And then I came, came back 10 years later and said, Hey, you know what? I don't like you anymore. Give me, give me that back. <laughs> right? That's not a gift, right? That's not how a gift works. Because you say, Hey, no, this is mine now. You gave it to me. Right? And remember, what did God give us? Everlasting life. Eternal life. Through faith in His Son, through belief on the Lord Jesus Christ, He says, here, here's everlasting life. So once you have everlasting life, God can't come and take it away from you because that would make God a liar when He told you, hey, I have a gift for you, it's everlasting life, right? 
Titus chapter 1 verse 2 says, In hope of eternal life, which God, that cannot lie, promised before the world began. So He promised each and every one of us, before we were even born, before He even created the earth, and before He created anything, He promised us and said, Hey, I already know you guys are going to sin. So I'm going to send my son to die for you because I love you. And I'm going to promise you everlasting life if you accept it. But it's your choice. I'm not going to force this upon you. If you don't want everlasting life, you want to die, you want to go to hell, hey, go for it. But for those of you who are wise, who are not fools, you, you want everlasting life in heaven with Jesus Christ, this is how you do it. You have to have faith in my son. It's all by grace, through faith, not of yourselves. It's the gift of God. You have to accept my, my son's sacrifice on the cross. You don't accept Jesus Christ's sacrifice, you ain't going. It's impossible because you have no faith. Or your faith is in the wrong place, I should say, right? Say, what, what happens if I, if I uh, am I going to stop sinning after I get saved, Sean, after I believe in Jesus? No, you're not going to stop say, stop sinning. Me, I'm going to sin until the day I take my last breath. And that's just the unfortunate truth about life. We're all sinners. Until we die and we go to be in heaven with Jesus, we're going to sin. The Bible says in Hebrews 12, 6, For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. So if, if you're a born-again Christian, you've been born again, you're going to keep sinning, but God's going to, now he's going to chasten you, right? So, so, you know, a lot of people think, well, so what, I can just do whatever I want, live however I want? Yeah, you can live however you want, but... There's going to be consequences in this life, right? If I were to go out and kill somebody, you know, God's going to punish me. He might strike me dead right then and there with a heart attack or by lightning, whatever. He might send, send me to uh, get taken away by the government. He might, he might uh, cause me to get some disease. There's all kinds of ways God can punish, God can punish us here and now for our sins. So it's not a license to sin. We don't get a license to sin just because uh, we're not bound to the law. We don't have it's because because here's the thing: it's not it's not our obedience to the law that saves us, right? Whether I go out and commit adultery or or not, um, is doesn't affect my salvation, right? But if I go out and commit adultery, God's going to say, "Hey." Since you're my son and I love you and I don't want you to do that, I'm going to punish you for that. I'm going to scourge you. And, 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 and mainly God does this because he's trying to correct our bad behavior. Because he loves us. Just like you would, uh, might spank your child. You know, if they, if they, did, if they uh, were playing with fire or something, right? You'd spank them and say, hey, don't do that. Not because I don't love you. I'm spanking you because I love you and I'm trying to correct your behavior. You see the difference? But see, here's the thing. If, if, if you're not a son of God, you don't believe in Jesus, God doesn't really care what you do because he's saying, hey, that's not my son. You know, just like if, if you saw some, uh, some other, somebody else's kid uh, running, uh, running around doing drugs and stuff, I mean, you might be upset, but you're not going to go spank him, right? Because it's not my kid, right? And, and the last thing I want to say is this. <clears throat> what if you have doubts? Like, because this is always, always going to come down... The line. Uh, once you get saved, once you believe in Jesus, you know, some somewhere down the line, you're gonna think, well, am I really saved? You know, is that really what the Bible says? You know, am I really gonna go to heaven just because I believe in Jesus? Just because He died for my sins? Well, the doubts are gonna come, okay? But John chapter 10 verse 28 says, "And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish; neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand." My Father, which gave them to me, is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. So the Bible says, hey, when you're saved, God takes you in His hand. And here's the thing. Are you stronger than God? I'm not. I don't think anybody is. And nobody can make that claim that they're stronger than God. So here's the thing. Even if you wanted to, even if you wanted to say, Hey, you know what? I don't want your salvation anymore, Jesus. <laughs> Down the line, right? This is theoretical, right? Nobody's ever going to do that. But even if you did, you're already in God's hand. And he said, no, 
I promised that I'd give this to you. You've already accepted it. You're already my son. You're already in my hand. You can't possibly even take run away from my hand, right? And let me put it this way, and this is the way I like to uh, explain this. Is I don't have any kids, but if, let's let's say I had a son, okay? Let's say that son said, you know what? You're not my dad anymore, Sean. <laughs> it's like, okay, son, whatever. I'm still your father, right? <clears throat> because of the blood, right? We're blood, re- we're blood related, right? Well, that's how God is. Jesus Christ shed his blood on the cross for us. And he says, hey, if you believe on my son, you believe on that blood that he died for you, believe it in your heart, you're my son now. You're adopted into the family. You can now inherit the kingdom of God and inherit eternal life through his blood. And there's nothing you can ever do to change that because once the blood's applied to you, God sees you as his son. And there's nothing you can ever do to change that. You can curse God and say, God, you know what, the hell with you. And he's going to say, I don't like that tone of voice, son. (laughs) You're a part of the family now. So you better uh, start acting right. Because I'm going to punish you (laughs) if you don't. Um, And he's not going to punish you with hell anymore, right? Remember, you're saved from hell. You can't go to hell. But he's going to punish you in this life, right, to correct you as a son. I'm going to close with uh, the most famous verse in the whole Bible, John 3.16. John 3.16, the most famous verse in the whole Bible, to just really wrap this up and, and let you know that, hey, ha- salvation is forever. It's a free gift that's forever. And I'm sure you've heard this verse. The Bible says in 1 John 3.16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Believeth in Him. It doesn't say you have to go to church. It says, Whosoever believeth in Him, what? Shall not perish, but have everlasting life. You believe in Jesus, you will never perish. That's the key. That's the ticket in. That's why it's the most famous verse in the whole Bible. So let me ask you a question, friends, who's watching this video. What do you believe? Where is your faith today? It's your faith in the Bible. Is it in the Holy Bible? Is it in Jesus Christ that He died for your sins? Or is it somewhere else? Because Romans 10, 17 says, Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. So I preached to you the Word of God today. You heard it. The question is, are you going to put your faith in it? Or are you going to put your faith in something else? And that's your choice to make. That's your decision to make. I'm just the messenger. I'm just here to bring you the message. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this message. Uh, it, was, it was a short gospel presentation. Um, and, and let me just close with this. And I'll say this last verse. Romans 10, 9 says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, Thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. So let me just close with this. I'm going to close with a prayer. And if if you believe this message, if you believe this gospel that I just preached to you, you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ uh, died for your sins on the cross, you believe that you're a sinner who doesn't deserve heaven, You actually deserve to go to hell, but only by the grace of God did He send His Son, Jesus Christ, to pay for your sins. And that there's nothing you can do to save yourself. That you have to put your faith on Jesus. You put all your faith on Him. You're not trusting in anything else to save you but Jesus. The Bible says, If you shall confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, thou shalt be saved. So right now I'm going to invite you the opportunity to pray with me. And we're going to confess right now with our, with our mouth and believe in our heart. And we're going to tell God. And if you're not saved, we're going to say this prayer. And that way, once we say this prayer, we could know. And it's not, remember, it's not the prayer that's going to save you. What's going to save you is the faith in Jesus, the belief in your heart. That's what's going to save you. But... If you, if you truly believe, you have that faith in your heart, then we're going to say this prayer to just confirm it. To just 
express it to God and let, it, uh, let Him know, hey, thank you for saving me. And this is what I believe, Lord. This is what I'm trusting in for salvation because we, we're not ashamed of the gospel, right? So go ahead and uh, just close your eyes and you can repeat after me and, and I'll lead you in a prayer. And prayer just goes really simple. Dear Heavenly Father, I confess that I'm a sinner. I know that I don't deserve to go to heaven, but I believe that Jesus Christ died for my sins, and I accept your gift of eternal life, Lord. I'm putting all my faith on you, Jesus. Jesus, thank you for saving me. Amen. And you believe that, right? If you believe that prayer, and you really truly meant it, and you told God that prayer in faith, then you're saved. The Bible says there is no way you can possibly ever go to hell. So congratulations. You know, I, I appreciate it and I appreciate having this beautiful day that God has given me to preach this wonderful message to you, this great news, the greatest news of all time. And I apologize for the wind and I apologize for <laughs> any uh, lack of speech or excitement that I have. I'm doing my best. Um, but anyway, um, so what next, Sean? Well, you know, the Bible says you need to grow in grace. You need to grow. So you can continue to watch my videos. I'll help you grow from here. Um, but the Bible says in 1 Peter 2, 2, As newborn babes desire the sincere, sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. So the next step, guys, is to grow. Because you've, you've just been born again. You're like a new baby. So, you know, don't worry about it if you struggle from here on out. You know, just like a baby, he doesn't know how to crawl. Or he, he has to crawl before he can walk, right? He, he doesn't know how to speak. He needs to be fed. So the first thing that I did when I got saved was I started watching videos on the Internet. You know, and that's why I preach these videos now for new people who may be new. Hey, maybe, maybe you're not ready to go to church yet, right? You're a new baby, so I'm just going to feed you. Right? But eventually, you're going to be able to pick this Bible up and read it for yourself because you're going to be a grown-up. But right now, if you're just a baby, hey, just turn on some videos on the Internet and learn. Try to open up your Bible and try to read, read, it, uh, read a little bit here and there. Right? And, 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 and let me give you a homework assignment. Open up uh, your, your Get a King James Bible and read the book of John. It's in the New Testament. It's only 20 pages long. 20 pages. So you just read one page a day. Take, it take you three minutes, okay? You read one page a day, and you grow from there, right? You learn about Jesus, and and you know, and I, I and I'm willing to bet you start reading that Bible, you start reading the Book of John, you're gonna to want to continue and finish the rest of the Bible. Then you want to go back to Genesis and read the whole Bible, okay? So after that, you know, and this is what I might preach on tomorrow is baptism, the importance of baptism. The first thing Jesus did in his ministry was he went and got baptized by John the Baptist. Now, why did Jesus get baptized? Was it because he was a sinner? No, because baptism pictures salvation. It shows our obedience to God. It shows God and it shows everybody else around us that, hey, we want to do what's right. We're going to follow um, uh, the right steps to grow properly. So baptism is the first thing you need to do next. So in order to do that, you need to go join a local church and get baptized uh, in the church but um, that, that'll be another sermon for another day. Anyways, I'm going to close here. And, you know, I'm going to pray that uh, this video is blessed by God. And, 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 if, and if you've been saved by this video, go ahead and uh, drop a comment below. Go ahead and shoot me an email, man. People would love to hear that. They, um, I would love to be uh, have the glory to be uh, sharing the gospel with you. But anyway, I'm going to close here. And I don't really have a, a gospel reading for the day. This video has been long enough. Um, but I'll be praying for you guys. I'll be praying for this message. And uh, God bless you guys and have a great day. This is Sean Alva signing off. Peace.